everybody, this is Jennifer and welcome to my channel where I talk about books, music, movies, and anything else that takes my fancy. Um, today is my 2017 reading wrap up, so we're going to go over everything that happened. Not everything. We have lives, do we not? Um, so we're going to do a quick, maybe not so quick overview of my reading in 2017. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, so I read 118 books this year. Um, my I exceeded my Goodreads goal, which is awesome. Um, I did not meet my Mount TBR goal for 2017, but I'm gonna try again this year and I'm gonna make it this time. Um, so, sorry, I've got some stats down because I did some quick calculations. I don't have a fancy spreadsheet like some people because I just don't. <laughs> some people can be that organized about their reading. I don't think I can. Anyway, that's what I have Goodreads for. Okay, so in 2017, I read 118 books. 45 were nonfiction, which is 38%, which I think is pretty decent. Um, and 62% which is 73 were fiction. Okay, so I gave, as far as like how my star ratings were, were spread out, I gave no books one star this year. Yay. No more, yeah. The last book I got, well, I've only given one book one star and it pissed me off royally. So, but I will talk about it because that was last year. That's not this year. Um, so yeah, zero star, zero one star ratings. Um, I gave seven two star, which is 5.9% of my books. Um, 37, which is 31.4% were given three stars. Um, and my highest ranking was four stars with 53 books or 44.9%. So almost half of my books were four stars. So I think I had a pretty decent reading year. Um, and 21 or 17.8% were uh, five stars. And to my, um, I don't want to, um, some people might think that's a lot of five stars, but a lot of those were rereads of books that I'd already given five stars. You know, you don't tend to read reread the books you gave two stars. Okay, so other highlights. Um, I started this channel for one. Um, I it's my first. It was my first full year using Goodreads. Um, I started reading graphic novels and comic books on a regular basis. Um, I took part in two Dewey's 24-hour readathons, and that will continue to next year. Um, I took part in Book Tubeathon, uh, Shake Tube. Um, I finally read Dracula after three tries as a part of Victober, and it's the only Victorian book I read, but it did take care of three of the challenges. Um, so I took part in Nonfiction November, which was really fun, and. And last, but definitely not least, the very fun 12 Days of Litmus, just things I took part in. So let's start talking about the books. Now I'm going to go through these quickly because I do not want to be negative. Jen is not a negative Nancy. So my disappointing, my most disappointing reads, I only did five. And I'm going to go through them quickly. I'm not going to show them to you or anything like that. One, because I only have one of them. And if I only showed you the one, it would feel like I was picking on that one. So I'm not going to show you that one either. Um, the Deep by Nick Cutter. That was two stars. And yeah, it just did not do it for me. Um, Let It Come Down by Paul Bowles I found disappointing. I thought that was going to be... I thought I would like that a bit more. Uh, the Club Dumas by Arturo Perez Riverte. I read during book two a -thon and that one was slightly annoying. Uh, and the one that I really, you know, that everybody on booktube likes and I miss and I, I, I don't really get it all that much. Uh, we Have Always Lived in the Castle by Shirley Jackson. And 
Last but not least on this one, the one that ticked me off to no end, even though I gave it four stars and I'm just like, it's such a freaking waste. Sorry. Sorry, we'll stop talking about that. Uh, it was Martin Eden by Jack London. Okay, so, um, I want to talk about some honorable mentions. They almost, almost, almost made it. Almost. Very close. Um, first one is Margaret the First by Danielle Dutton. Um, I read this earlier in the year and I kind of forgot about it, which is, which is a problem. But I really liked it at the time I read it and thought it was very interesting. Uh, next up is More Happy Than Not by Adam Severa, which is my favorite, well, my second favorite YA pick of the year, breed of the year. Um, I only read like a handful but more on my YA favorite coming up. Uh, the Argonauts by Maggie Nelson. I read that right after Margaret the First. And I liked it so much I almost bought a copy and then it never showed up so I had to get a refund and I haven't bought it again. So there's that. Um, and M Train by Patti Smith, which I, I read at the very beginning of the year in January and I really liked it. But last year, my favorite nonfiction was just Kids by Patti Smith, so I didn't want to... And it, it's not quite as good as that one, but I really did still like it. But not quite enough to make this list. Okay, so... And then two that I read in December, which are To the Bright of the Edge of the World by A1 Ivy, which is really beautiful, but I, I don't know. It just didn't quite get there for me. And Cork Dork by Bianca Bosker, which was really interesting. <clears throat> so let's get started on my favorite stuff of this year. So my favorite graphic novels, number one is going to Nimona. This is just, this is just lovely. Uh, you have Nimona, who's a, sh a shapeshifter, and she wants to apprentice herself to Lord Ballister Blackheart. And she gets him and everybody else in and herself into trouble. And she helps kind of bring to the forefront this bit of a conspiracy. And this is so, this was so fun. And yeah, it was touching too at times. It was really nice. I liked it a lot. And then next up is Monstrous by Marjorie Liu and Sana Takeda. I mean, this is just, the artwork is so gorgeous. That's really, that really trumps the story for me for this, this particular. Um, series, but the story is still really good. Um, there's this war between humans and these animal human hybrids things called Arcanics, and then there are like old gods and this weird tree demon thing that inhabits her body. Um, anyway, it's so good. The story is very good, and there's a lot of, there's mystery to it, there's adventure to it, and the artwork is brilliant. So yeah, that was my favorite graphic novel series of this year. Um, and I'm giving a special shout out to Antediluvian Tales by Poppy Z. Bright, who is my favorite author. And I had not read this um, set of short stories before, and I read it during, uh, Dewey's 24 hour readathon, the first one I think in April. And they're just, it's so full of characters that I love and the writing style I love. And it's mostly fiction, but it has a non fiction element too. So I didn't know which one to put it. So it's just gonna have its own category because I love Bobby Z. Wright. Yeah. So that was one of my favorites of this year. <clears throat> drink, drink break. Okay, so 
more often than not, what you're going to get in these types of videos is nonfiction and then fiction. However, the nonfiction I've read this year has outstripped the fiction I've read. Um, I've read good fiction, as you can tell by my review earlier about my star ratings and all that. But my favorite nonfiction is better than my favorite fiction this year. And I know that's not usually the way it happens, but that's the way it happened this time. So <coughs> I'm going to start with my favorite fiction. I don't know if you can see it. Oh no, you definitely can't with this light. But my, um, my first mention is Auntie Mame by Patrick Dennis. Oh my goodness, this book was a hoot. Um, so this orphan uh, by the name of Patrick goes to live with his Auntie Mame, his dad's eccentric uh, sister. And his dad wants him to be raised very strictly and very staidly. So he has a trustee appointed to him. And so there is Auntie Mame's influence and then there's the trustee's influence and it's so good. I love it. It's hilarious. So after that is Idaho by Emily Ruskovich. Let me see if I can't make this work for you. Idaho by Emily Ruskovich. Um, this novel has staying power, let me tell you, because the atmospheric feeling it gives you, um, the feeling of the book is so, I'm not trying, I don't know, I'm trying to figure out the word for this. And so, well, let's just start with a quick synopsis. Um, this story is mainly from the perspective of this man's second wife and his first his first marriage ends tragically with the death of one of his child his children the disappearance of the other and his wife is in prison for the murder so you have this it's happening after kind of there's also the changing in the times because she knew him a little bit before the tragedy and then she marries him like a year or so after the tragedy so it's her trying to figure out a little bit more of what's going on and dealing with him and his dementia that he gets from his dad so yeah I don't know this this novel just stuck with me all year long and it's not like it wasn't the most fun book but it was a compelling read and I wanted to know what was going on and how it would all shake out and in the end I really I really ended up liking it so next up is, let me show you, sorry, The Man Who Was Thursday by G.K. Chesterton. Um, I love this one. Uh, I listen to it mostly as an audiobook. And this man it's by the name of Simon, I think. Anyway, I read this a little while back, so the names sort of escaped me. Uh, it's a bit of a spy, intriguey kind of a thing, but it's also very humorous and very philosophical. <coughs> oh, excuse me. Yeah, so it's very... There's a whole bunch of spy stuff going on, and they're trying to elect this new um, a member of their anarchist group. And it's so it's so much fun. So, yeah, and that got five stars for me. It was hilarious. And then next up is The Call of the Wild by Jack London. Um, 
yeah, so this is Buck. Buck here. He's half St. Bernard, half uh, Shepherd. And he gets stolen from his nice, comfortable home and gets put to work as a sled dog in Alaska. And so this is very... He goes from a comfortable life to a very hard, very perilous life. And this is his journey um, through that. And it's so good. It, it, it's really, it's heart wrenching, it's heartwarming, it's. There's a lot of good stuff going on there. Um, and then my favorite fiction. It's time for my favorite fiction, you guys. And it is The Sea Wolf. Can you see that? The Sea Wolf by Jack London. Yeah, I read three Jack Londons. Um, so this man, uh, Humphrey Van Weeden, gets caught up in a boat accident. And so he gets pitched into the ocean and he gets picked up by this whaling schooner, I think, um, that's captained by this man called Wolf Larson. He's brutal, he's philosophical, and he's happy to have someone to talk to about philosophy and to whip into shape and make into a man. So this is um, Humphrey's journey on this whaling schooner with Wolf Larson, and it's so good. Um, it's got action, it's got sailing, which is a thing I love in theory, and <laughs> not in practice quite so much. Um, and it's just, yeah, it's a very good tale of adventure and hardship and murder and stuff on the high seas. So there you go. That was my number one fiction book of 2017. So it is time to get started on the nonfiction. Yay. All right. So Quick disclaimer, <clears throat> I don't have any of these books to show you because they were all either, they're all either Audible or library loan ebooks because that is how I take my nonfiction. Um, it's kind of hard for me to read nonfiction. I prefer to listen to it. Um, it's not always the case, but most of the time. So let's get started. Okay, so quick, uh, quick little thing. Um, these are in no particular order except for the very last one because that is my favorite book of the entire year. So of course it's my favorite nonfiction. Um, okay, so let's get let's get started on this one. Uh, my first pick is *The Silk Roads*, a new story of the a new history of the world by Peter Frankpin, and. This, I, I'm not overly into world history as far as um, topics is concerned. I'm more like science oriented. Um, but this really had me from the get go and it was very informative. It's about the um, middle to far east and its role in the world in the history of the world. Um, <clears throat> it's, I, I, I thought it was really well, well written and it got me interested in topics that I'm not usually interested in. So that went on my list. Um, next up is Reality is Not What It Seems by Carlo Rovelli. And this is a bit of an overview of loop quantum gravity, which is kind of like oppo uh, the, the opposing theory to string theory about how everything works out. And this book explains loop quantum gravity and it explained it in a way that I thought was really good. And it adds elements of philosophical, um, 
philosophical issues that surround it and I thought it did a really good job of explaining it and I thought it was very engaging so I really liked it. Next up is A View from the Cheap Seats by uh, Selected Nonfictions by Neil Gaiman. Uh, this audiobook was read by Neil Gaiman which is charming because Neil Gaiman is freaking charming and I really liked like 80% <laughs> 80% of it. Some of it dealt with stuff I wasn't really into or I didn't know too much about, but anything written and read by Neil Gaiman, I'm down for. So that also made the list. Um, these last three are like, okay, the previous ones were four stars. These last three are my five star nonfiction, like creme de la creme. And the first one is The Judgment of Paris. The revolutionary decade that gave us, um, in, that gave the world Impressionism by Ross King. And this deals with the decade, pretty much the 1860s, and the um, salons in Paris, and the political and the world politics that influenced them. Um, it contrasts two artists that were active at the time. Um, Edward, well, Edward Manet and Ernest uh, Maisonnier, um, one representing the new, brash, new, um, barrier-crashing art scene, and then one definitely representing the old, older guard. Um, not the really, really old guard, because the really, really old guard was even more but you get that you get that all in the book and it was just it was really well written and the contrasts really brought forward and it was a really good staging for what the author wanted to bring to you as far as information is concerned and I really liked it and I read it really quickly and so it goes in my in my top list anyway so next up was one that I read during the first Dewey's 24 hour readathon. It's again, it was an audiobook. It's Cannibalism, the perfectly a perfectly natural history by Bill Shutt. And basically does what it says on the tin. It's a history of and the idea of cannibalism and how it works in the animal kingdom and in the human perspective. So, you know, if you want to know the gory details of the wolf spider mating dance, and they are gory, this is the book for you. It's, it was really interesting, and it was well written, it was humorous, and it just had so much good stuff in it. It was really, I really loved it. And so here comes up, this is my favorite book of the year, full stop. And it is a really big lunch. Meditations on Food and Life from the Roving Gourmand, and this is by Jim Harrison. Um, he's the novelist who died, I think, in 2016 or 2017. Um, he wrote Legends of the Fall, the novella that the movie is based on, and he's a really big name in middle, Midwestern literature. So this is him, and he's telling, st well, this is all kinds of articles he wrote for certain magazines and some essays he wrote about, again, food and life. And it's so funny. I was like, I was dying laughing pretty much every like minute or two. Well, I was laughing every pretty, pretty much every minute or two. Um, his sense of humor, his obviously love his obvious love for his topic, it really shines through. And he's such an interesting personality and he details such interesting things. And he name drops a lot, <laughs> but you get over that. Um, yeah, this, this was just, this book was a delight from like beginning to end for me. I know some people would disagree, but I don't. And that was my absolute favorite book of the year. And I cannot wait. I'm going to reread it at some point this year too. And 
yeah so that is my 2017 reading wrap up please feel free to make comments about how your reading year went um, I'd be happy to know and we'd have a discussion in the comment section um, please also feel free to like share and subscribe or hit me up on any of the uh, links that are in the description box um, Twitter I'm you know I'm on Twitter and Instagram and all that good stuff and good reads okay so yeah that's it we've wrapped up 2017 2018 we're raring to go so thanks so much for stopping by and uh, I'll see you again in the next video bye